Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tucker and Crowley Report, part of News Now and the Belmont Journal. I'm joined by Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I am Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, what news this week? So, uh, I think the, I think the uh, the most impactful news that we that we had was that the uh, select board uh, came close uh, to making two decisions on uh, parking along Concord Avenue. One at the post office and one at the Veterans Memorial. Now, uh, now Frank, when you say they came close, does that mean that nothing's been decided yet? It hasn't been officially decided, but it's pretty close to um, that. They, they they basically said you know, they're going to make sure that um, they're going to just do a little bit more research on these two uh, areas and uh, then move, for, move forward on uh, July 10th. Um, and, and so let's be clear, move forward with what exactly? So, of course, uh, what we have is with the post office. Uh, there's been ever since the post office was uh, was uh, going to be ever since the bike uh, the bike path and this has to do all with bike path the bike path was going to go uh, on the curb uh, we've been getting uh, even before they even put the striping on the on the on the uh, street of, on Cochrane Avenue uh, the level of complaints um, from mostly elderly uh, citizens and residents who use the post office was. Uh, it was extraordinary. Mark Polo said in his 12 years as a, as a selectman, uh, a select board member, uh, he'd never seen that kind of level of um, of uh, concentrated, uh, um, I wouldn't call it anger, but concern on the part of, of, of like, like I said, mostly older people. Because and, now- And what's the nature of the complaints, Franklin? So what it is, is that uh, when, when people now, under the new striping rule, uh, what you, what, um, uh, cars that uh, park in the parking lane open their door and they're a bit close to the actual travel lane uh, where vehicles are. Uh, that's because the bikes are now uh, on the curb. Mm -hmm. um, now that just, you know, you, 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 like like what one selectman, a uh, select board member said, it was, it's just, you know, constant, you know, just a constant drumbeat of this is dangerous. We don't know what's going to happen. Don't, you know, and, uh, um, and for some reason, you know, for the last couple of months, the biking community, which is which was, at, you know, at one time very, very strong and very united, mm -hmm. they haven't been even coming out to the meetings. So it's been like, you know, a couple of people you'll hear talk about it, but mostly it's the the defender of the bike path is the uh, transportation advisory committee, led by David Coleman. So, so Franklin, let me ask you: apart from the the biking community um, here in town. Um, isn't it true that uh, the, um, the 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 reconfiguration of of the the parking and bike lane on Concord Avenue has slowed down traffic? And doesn't doesn't the select board recognize that as having um, certain benefits? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the, that 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 is their big issue, uh, and that is that they would want to see. Uh, I know that the the the, the current uh, the current speed limit on Concord Avenue is twenty five miles an hour. Uh, they would like to see that slowed even more because it is a it is a, a concern at the post office because the post office is right next to the uh, curb going into Belmont Center under the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So you know there's a lot of traffic there also coming from coming down of, off of Common Street, and it, it, and so what they've decided is that you know they're going to put the the bicycle lane uh, onto the street for just that limited amount of time that cars are at the post office. Um, now, you know, uh, the, some of the people who said that this is going to just be a bad decision because it's going to put bikers right in with cars that are drifting to the right mm -hmm. to get under the bridge. So, you know, that's always going to be a concern. Um, but, you know, what really, what really, I think, really pushed the uh, select board to, um, to go in this direction is that they, they, they they started to hear uh, um, uh, complaints, <laughs> more complaints, but this one from uh, um, uh, town departments, of, uh, you know, um, uh, development and um, uh, DPW. And what was the nature of those complaints? Well, the DPW, they, what, what, uh, what David Coleman of TAC brought through recommendations to uh, try to improve the safety in that area. He was talking about having bollards, you know, mm -hmm. current bollards, uh, at each, uh, where the crosswalk is to go to the post office. Mm -hmm. And that will uh, allow for greater sight line because the bollards will prevent cars from pushing in. Um, but this would cause, you know, whenever there's a snowstorm, those bollards have to be removed. And as, as um, you know, as, as 
Mr. Marcotte of the uh, DPW said, you know, I already, my, my crew is already, you know, you know, we're, we're already doing hundreds of things, you know, so we can't, it's going to be really difficult for us to do this. Glenn Clancy, uh, you know, of, um, you know, of uh, community development said, you know, we're doing this piecemeal. Why are we always doing things piecemeal? Come on, give, you know, if you can give me some idea of how we're going to do this on a long, a long term basis, then it's going to be actually, you know, good, it will be a better plan. And I think, you know, the, the select board heard that and they said, why don't we just go back to the old way and then, you know, maybe revisit this later, see if, the, if we can have some kind of permanent, um, you know, uh, solution to it. Now, now, to be clear, Franklin, the, 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 the changes that are under discussion, um, don't, they, they would not apply to the entire stretch of Concord Just Avenue. that part uh, where the post office is. Where, you know, where, and, and, and what about the Veterans Memorial? Now, the Veterans Memorial is a different, uh, is, is a different uh, uh, animal, let's say. Okay. Um, it's uh, 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 Veterans, uh, uh, led by uh, Mr. Callahan, uh, who's on the, uh, who's on the um, Memorial Committee. Uh, he said that, you know, right now, um, uh, 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 veterans who want to go see, uh, uh, handicapped veterans who want to go see the um, the uh, memorial can't do it safely. He's saying that, you know, if you're in a wheelchair and you have to bring that wheelchair out, um, um, it's going to be difficult because you're going to be in traffic. It's, 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 again, you have older people who are trying to go there. Um, and what they uh, what they really wanted they wanted three spaces on the well, let's call it after Hittinger, mm -hmm. uh, going uh, right at the corner where the memorial uh, you can get into the memorial. Um, uh, now um, uh, uh, the, the uh, traffic advisor committee and also a number of people said, uh, you know, you're you're taking up a lot of spaces. You know, you're gonna and and this is at right at the time when we're going to see a massive amount of new cars coming to the school because, you know, whether it's, a, you know, whether it's um, parents bringing students or, or the lack of spaces that are now in front of the school, because we, because for some odd reason, I shouldn't say odd reason, but for some reason, uh, the parking, the 100 parking spaces that were out in front of the school have been taken away and it's going to be landscaped. Um, so we're, there's going to be a need for every parking space you can find. Um, and um, I think the, um, uh, the select board heard that. And what they were trying to do is find a compromise. And I think they found one, or, or they believe they found one. And that is, um, well, first thing, <laughs> what, what's going to happen, or why, what is being suggested is going to happen, is that Hittinger Street that used to go from Concord Avenue down to the high school, it's mm -hmm. going to be changed. It's going to go up from the high school. Uh, and that is because of, you know, people, uh, they don't want people on the neighborhood streets like, like, you know, like Hittinger and, and the other streets. So they're going to move, the, so they're going to uh, change direction there. Now that change of direction will allow, uh, uh, what, what I've heard is that they will allow two spaces uh, to be uh, placed inside next to the, uh, uh, next to, um, at the corner of Hittinger and, uh, Concord Avenue. But so those, those spaces would be on Hittinger or on Concord? It would be on Hittinger. Oh, I see. So, so you wouldn't have to change the bike lane. All right. And it's also really convenient to uh, be right right close there. Now, there's another. there, there are issues with talking to neighbors. You know, you're going to be taking basically two spots. And it, but there would be handicapped parking spaces. So, you know, unless there's a handicapped parking, unless there's a person with handicapped plates or a medallion, he, that person won't be able to you know, people won't be able just to park there. So let me ask you this: these aren't these are not um, final decisions that have been made. They, they, they've been talking about this in, in in a way of saying this is what we're 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 going. This is the okay. direction we're going, and it looks like on July twelve uh, July tenth we're going to finalize everything. All right. Well, let's move on then, Franklin, and talk about the the library, which has a need to find new locations um, where, uh, as the current building is demolished. What can you tell us about that? Well, uh, after uh, a, a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a struggle, um, all uh, the, the many of the town uh, departments um, 
have got, uh, got together with the uh, building committee over at the library or, and the library trustees to find uh, locations for three of the uh, programs that they have at the, uh, uh, um, at the library currently. So uh, the children's collection will be going over to the Benton Library. Uh, the uh, adults and, uh, you know, multiple, uh, other circulation uh, uh, will, <laughs> will be going over to uh, the Beach Street Center. All right. Uh, and uh, staffing uh, will be going to the Chenery Upper, uh, Upper Elementary School. Now, when is this happening? It's going to be happening in November uh, because that's when the first, well, it will happen just before November because uh, demolition is going to start in November, December. So we're going to see in less than six months, we're going to see the start of demolition uh, of the, of the, of the uh, current library. And, and let me ask you about the, the, the Benton Library. Um, how, how will moving the children's collection to the Benton affect the ongoing um, Benton Library operations? Well, see, that, that, that's what was so hard to find a place because, mm -hmm. you know, no one wants to give up space. And But, you know, it was basically, the, you know, they said, you know, you're going to get a lot of new customers here. <laughs> and, uh, and, those, and it's a beautiful place for children. If you've ever been in the Benton Library, it's gorgeous, you know, and uh, it already has a little uh, kid section. And um, so it will be, you know, they'll have certain hours and, uh, but um, I think that's going to be a big hit. I think right. I love that. That sounds good. So um, I understand, Franklin, that uh, we're going to have some new blue donation bins appearing around town. What are they for? Well, they are already there. Oh, they are. <laughs> They've been installed for about, a, I think, a month okay. or something like that. And uh, what it is is that as of November 1st, uh, the uh, state has prohibited any kind of textiles, whether it's clothing, rugs, bedding, you know, anything uh, to be placed in uh, what we what we in Belmont would call our black, you know, bins. Well, our, our household trash. Yeah, right, exactly. So, um, uh, so there had to be some solution. Well, um, uh, uh, the DPW was already thinking about this, and they started negotiating with this company that actually, you know, it, it basically they uh, they they take clothing and they either recycle it or they make them to rags or things like that so if you if you go to these blue bins and they're in six locations around town uh it, the, the two that you might see is uh that you may see already is at um, um the claflin parking lot there's two of them um and what you have to do is like if you have any kind of clothing just put it into a, a uh, into a, uh, a plastic trash bag uh tie it up and put it in there, and it'll be um, it'll be uh, taken up uh, uh, on, a, on a schedule. So, and you can. And then we also now the town has a agreement with this company through the Big Brother Big Sisters that you can take even more stuff, like uh, dishes and pots and and things like that. that. Uh, they they will take that away on uh, on an ongoing basis if you call them up. So let me ask you quickly, uh, textiles. Um, and, and the special arrangement that we now have for textile recycling, um, this will include clo used clothing, rugs, things like shoes? Yes, shoes. Uh, um, I, I'm still trying to figure out whether, um, whether it's uh, athletic shoes, you know, the more rubbery mm -hmm. you know, cloth um, shoes. I think leather shoes have to be going to the, the pickups. Okay. So it's it's, but at least there's a solution, and it's you know you, you, we no longer have to stuff it in in our attic. All right. Well, that sounds good, um, Franklin. Um, next up, we have a sports update. What can you tell us? Well, uh, most of the sports season is over, but uh, we have two young ladies from Belmont who are who who came back two weeks ago with some uh, silverware from uh, two uh, national co competitions. Uh, Ellie Shea, uh, as she's the established, <laughs> everybody knows who she is by now. She's a junior going into her senior year. She won a very prestigious meet over in um, somewhere in the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, and it was the Brooks uh, PR Invitational. She mm -hmm. won the two mile. She, 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 and her time is now the best time by a high schooler this year in America. Oh, that's so, amazing. So she is very fast and very good so and and the race itself was it was fantastic she and another young lady 
raced it together basically. And the young lady who was racing against Ellie uh, really put on a sprint, but at the very end, uh, Miss Shea just took off and uh, won by a good second. So it was a great victory for her. Um, and then we have uh, a sophomore, uh, a, a rising junior, as we say, uh, and her name is uh, Dana Lear. And uh, she is, she's just been remarkable this year. She's been lowering all her personal best times by, you know, chunks. Um, and uh, it, she had a two mile best, uh, she has broken her best two mile time by at least like like a minute and, 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 and five or 10 seconds. Wow. So she went to the um, New Balance National Championships over at Franklin Field. Not um, named after you. <laughs> no, but I ran on Franklin Field. Okay. So, so Franklin, so Franklin ran on Franklin Field. Um, so she uh, ran in this uh, called the Rising Stars event. It's where the, where they take all these good runners who are producing good times, maybe not the best times, but you can see that they're 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 doing great. She ran that race. She ran in the first heat, and even though she ran the first heat, which is always considered the slower heat. Um, she ran a, a, just a fantastic time. I think it was 10 minutes and 41 seconds or something like that. And she won the and she won the, uh, the uh, that meet. So and um, she's going to be going over to a uh, international meet. I think the under 20 national championships. So and I you know Ellie, she's uh, on her own. She's you know she doesn't run for Belmont High School. She runs for her club, Emerging Elites. Um, so um, we'll find out what she's she's going to be doing, but she's uh, she came. Uh, we have to know that in the next couple of months she's going to be running cross country, or hopefully she'll run cross country because she finished second in the national championships back in December in San Diego. So maybe we'll see her again there. All right, that sounds good, Franklin. Um, you can see more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. That's all for now, and we will see you next time.